So this is the DJI Mavic 4 Pro, and this drone features such an amazing set of things for photogrammetry. And also, it has a number of really cool upgrades that I don't even think are advertised that just how good this is. So compared to the Mavic 3, which we'll be comparing it to today, as well as the DJI Air 3S, the DJI Air 3S actually has a 50 megapixel one inch sensor, which is really good, but also can be upgraded a little bit, at least when compared to the Mavic 4 Pro. The original Mavic, actually the Mavic 3, and also the 3 Pro and the Classic and all that stuff, they had this 4 thirds inch 20 megapixel main sensor, which I was a little disappointed because while this is great for video, it did not do a whole lot of photography really well. I mean, for example, I think the photos out of the Air 3S actually had higher detail and I actually personally think were better quality than whatever came out of the Mavic just because of the limitations on that sensor. Now the video out of the Mavic was definitely superior, but it still lacked in the photography portion. So now the Mavic 4 Pro has this 100 megapixel main sensor. So you actually have a partial shutter, which is that the shutter does not close all the way, but it does actually shrink a little bit when you take the pictures. Also, this drone itself, and this is the really big one that I don't think DJI advertised at all, uses a U-Blox GPS, actually the same one that is used in a lot of RTK systems, as well as the one that I was actually looking at building for a RTK attachment that would sit on top of the drone. So think about it this way. This has the same level of precision that the kind of RTK attachments is. Now, the reason why it's not RTK and probably why they didn't advertise it is because you actually have to have some way to stream the corrections or you know a base station or something like that to the drone itself. But the GPS is so accurate, I think you could get really high quality PPK results or post-processing results if you had like a, a marker on the ground that you knew the position of, you could line up a really good point cloud. So the GPS is extremely accurate. When I flew this in the dark, it was rock steady even like 30 some meters up. So this is definitely a substantial step up than whatever the heck they put on the original Mavic 3 because the original Mavic 3 took forever for the GPS to acquire a lock. This is substantially better in terms of GPS. Also, this supports Waypoint Map, which means you can fully automate your missions. This is so good. Um, I actually have the model with the RC Pro 2, and that also works with Waypoint Map. So you can load up custom flight plans, and I'll show you how to do that as well. But overall, this drone is just such a substantial upgrade, at least when it comes to the quality of hardware that you're looking at here. The picture quality, the internal hardware, as well as the ability to just still do automated missions is just so awesome here. Also, 51 minutes of flight time means you even get a lot more models in. In my testing, which you'll see later on, I was able to get three runs of three kind of scans in. So it took about 45 minutes to scan three different things on one battery versus on the Mavic 3, it would have taken me about probably two batteries to replicate the same amount of results. So let's go through, let's plan a mission. I'm gonna show you where I'm gonna fly, my thought process for how I'm gonna plan that mission. And then I'm gonna go through and use the Mavic 3, the Air 3S, and the Mavic 4 Pro to scan the area. We'll compare the results and we'll see how good they look. But overall, super impressed with this drone. Also, one thing I almost forgot. This drone, specifically the model that I have here, is the 512 gigabyte version. This is the creator combo. And what's so important about this is when you are taking 100 megapixel images, most SD cards, if not all of them, are going to struggle, at least the ones that you're gonna buy that's reasonably cheap. So if you do not get this model, it will be very difficult to take 100 megapixel images. You'll be able to probably take 25, but the 100 megapixel images, you will have, basically what happens on some of the other drones is you'll take a picture, and by the time, that, at least if you're doing automated mission, by the time the drone gets to the next waypoint, it has not finished saving that picture and therefore starts missing pictures and this happens a lot in grid patterns especially on people running on slow sd cards so if you choose to get this for photogrammetry just keep in mind that the 512 gig version has the integrated storage it's super fast it allows you to take pretty much pictures in one second intervals it is so freaking fast and i want to say it's almost necessary if you are going to go through and do photogrammetry on this drone do not try doing this without the 512 gig version or the creator combo. Otherwise, I personally think you'll be bottlenecking yourself at least when you start using this drone. 
Okay, so first let's go through and plan the mission specifically in the normal spots that I fly. So I test all my drones out at this baseball park um, and basically I do a pretty standard flight plan. What I'm going to do today is just two concentric circles, one out to the outside here facing inwards and actually let me make sure that I generate every point and also I think that's good. So let me do that and that will generate them all facing inwards. And then I'm also going to do the same thing a little closer. And I'm actually going to change the gimbal orientation so it's a little bit lower. And I'm also going to generate that same thing. So this is my first flight plan. And basically just two concentric circles around the um, baseball field here. And so I'm just going to download that real quick. So that's one. It's a little bathhouse here. So I'm going to do this. And that will be my second one. So then I will be able to download that. This is at what altitude again? 60 meters, that's good. Download that, that's mission number two. And then I am also going to go to Bond Park Community Center. And this is my other place that I like going to as well. And then I'm going to fly a couple missions. If you're just doing one mission, you can use the Waypoint Map KMZ installer, which will automatically install them. But since I have a couple, I haven't gotten around to programming multiple. So you'll have to go through and just either manually if you're doing multiple, or even if you have the RC2 Pro, you can use that with the Waypoint Map KMZ installer. Um, but I'm doing multiple missions. So I'm just going to manually install them real quick. So now let's talk about what actually happens when I fly this mission. Um, I want to also take a quick moment to also talk about the RC2 Pro because one of the big things and the big you know problems I guess with Waypoint Map and running these automated missions is the lower end controllers. They don't actually let you go through and fly a whole lot of points versus when the, with the RC2 Pro, I was able to get about 400 plus some points. So the original RC, the DJI RC, got about 100 waypoints that you could have versus the RC2, I think believe got close to 200. And this has about 450 that I was able to get there. It still was laggy, but I was able to get the mission loaded without it crashing. Which is kind of weird because fundamentally the waypoint should not be that intensive in terms of memory. I don't know what they're doing and how much data they're loading that the waypoints are that intensive. But I was able to load all these relatively easy without much issue. So I guess that is one thing to consider. Also, I have found that if you really do need that much more waypoints, it's probably best to get like a DJI RC N3 or whatever and get a dedicated device with a lot of RAM on it because usually the restriction seems to be RAM and if you need all that many points, while the RC2 Pro is very nice, I would just go ahead and get a much higher end device that has a lot more RAM, and that way you can run more points. It does suck. I do think the RC2 Pro is a better device overall, but I think that's just an important distinction to make, especially when you're running missions like this. So now I'm gonna go through and throw all these pictures into aerial model, and then look at the final results and compare them to some of the other stuff. So on your right here, you have the Mavic 4 Pro's final output. And then I have a couple different outputs from some different drones, and I'll have to explain them as we go on. But some things that I just want to point out is, on the surface, this does look kind of different and also not that great. But I'd like you to also keep in mind some certain things about this specific situation. As this was in the middle of the day, there was some glare and that has kind of what's messed up this. If I wanted to get a little bit better quality model, I'd pick an overcast slash cloudy day, and that would have helped a lot with some of these roof artifacts. Now, where you don't get glare, you get some really nice models. And what I mean by that is, whenever you zoom in here, you can see there is so much more detail in places that you're not getting glare. So for example, as you can see here, if we just like kind of replicate this, there is a lot more detail along the windows here even the ledge here on the end, edge of this roof like you can't even see it in this model and even on the sides here you also have a lot more detail i would just say that the detail is so much more prevalent now the artifacting you should definitely we could talk about again just flying an overcast day but for the most part it just it looks a lot better in terms of quality. You can even see how much sharper some of these corners are and even some of these hard to see places are compared to what I believe this was shot on the Mini 4 Pro. And just by like taking a look, you can clearly see that the walls are even have more definition. So replicating this over here. 
In places that you didn't have glare, the walls even have better definition there as well. So there is definitely a lot more present. And I think that the quality of the areas that are not super directly in sunlight, which I guess is the roof really, are actually, in my opinion, a lot more crisper as well. I'm also going to include the data set that I used of both the original pictures from the Mavic 4 Pro, as well as I believe all the different Mavic 4 Pro pictures. So you can run them on your own photogrammetry software. Um, and as you can see, just by flying in the winter in an overcast day, I believe, I believe this was overcast. Um, you get a lot more, just a lot more capturing of the subject versus this is this had a lot of struggling because of just how much it was flying on. Also, there's a post here and this always throws off this little corner right here. Um, and I, I guess it's just because you fly around it and it can't determine that. Um, but then there's that. And then finally, I believe this is the Air 3 S. This must, no, this must have been the Mini 4 Pro. And the other one must have been the Air 3, Air 3S, because this was winter. So this, as you can see, is still struggling in pretty much the same spots. Different reasonings. I think also different weather, too. But overall, you can kind of see that this struggles all along the corners. It's always a luck of the draw with these, especially when you're obfuscating it with trees. But overall, I think it's more than capable. I think the colors are probably just much more accurate. So if you want to check out my full review of the Mavic 4 Pro, I'll have that posted shortly and you'll be able to take a look and kind of look at the differences in video and photo quality compared to some of the other drones as well.